Hello again. I'm going to make the citrus biscuits today and they have the zest of an orange and a lemon in them, so they're very tasty. You'll need about two baking trays because it makes somewhere in the region of 25 to 30 biscuits, but that depends on the size of cutter that you use. Now I've got the oven on to gas mark six and I've got two baking trays lined with magic non-stick liner. You could use greaseproof paper if you don't have any of this stuff. But to begin with, we need to get the citrus fruits ready and I'm going to grate the zest off the lemon first. I'm going to use the smaller holes on the grater, not the nutmeg one, not the slicing one, not the cheese one. It's that one there. And you really only want the very, very outside, the bit that's yellow. If you take the white as well, you'll have a nasty flavour. So you need to keep turning the lemon as you go and just checking where you've got patches of zest that haven't come off and go back and just use those areas. There we are, that's my lemon. Now I'm gonna move on to the orange and obviously you'll get a lot more zest off this. There we are, that's my orange done. Now the next thing I need to do is just cut it in half and squeeze the juice because we will need some of the juice to lighten up our biscuit mixture. You won't need all of it, and so I suggest that you drink what's left over, full of vitamin C. Once you've taken the zest off the outside of the orange, it doesn't keep very well, so you need to do something with it, like use the juice. With a lemon, you can always cut that up and put that into a jug of lovely cold water to drink on a hot day or have with a meal. So that's my fruit dealt with. And in here will be all of my zest. Most of it's gonna be stuck to the grater, so just go in there with a knife and scrape out as much as you possibly can. There we are, that's the first bit done. Now in the mixing bowl, I've got 100 grams of soft butter, unsalted butter, otherwise you get a nasty flavor. And to that I'm gonna add 75 grams of caster sugar. It's a bit lumpy, so as I mix it, hopefully, the beater will take the lumps out. So, quick mix. Right, that's that. Now the next thing we're going to do is to add an egg yolk. So we've got to separate the egg. And I don't know how you like to separate eggs, but I've got this quite neat way of doing it, where you crack your egg onto a plate, sharp tap, pull the shell apart, and then you take an egg cup and to cover the yolk with the egg cup and pour the white into a separate bowl. So over the top like that and then tip. And you can see the thick white is much more jellyish. It takes a minute or two to just separate from the egg yolk. So give it a bit of a whiz round and just get those last bits. There's a piece there that doesn't want to come off. So there we are, we've got our egg yolk, that goes in next, and we mix again. Now, all we do now is put in the flour and the zest of the orange and the lemon. And I've got 200 grams of plain flour, which all goes in at once. Then I'm going to add my zest as well. This is a bit more messy, so you might want to use something like a brush to get that off the board. In it goes. And this will take a minute or two to mix. It's going to be quite a dry mixture and actually towards the end we put a little bit of the orange juice in as well. So take your time getting this mixed in. Now it's starting to mix. It's quite a dry crumbly mixture. It's quite yellow because of the butter and the zest. And here we go with our two spoons of orange juice. I wouldn't use the lemon juice, I'd just stick with orange juice if I were you. And start to mix again. Now, whoops, lost a bit there. I think you can see that the clumps are getting bigger. So I'm not gonna mix anymore with a mixer. I'm gonna start to just squeeze it together with my hand. We'll move those out of the way, we'll get them up here. And then we just go in with our hand and start to squeeze. See how easy it is to get that to come together. And I've got it on a mat so it doesn't slide around too much. 
Right, so there's our dough. Now I've got to just clear this up and then we'll start to roll it out. Now I've put a little bit of flour on the work surface and I'm going to put a bit on the top as well because it's just liable to stick a bit to the rolling pin. You do need to have your trays ready, I've got my two tins ready, and you need to choose the cutter that you're going to use. I've got one here that I haven't used before, it's a new one from Lakeland, but you could use a daisy, you could just, just make circles, it's entirely up to you. But if you're doing this with a child and using a mixture of shapes, put all of the big shapes on one tray and all of the little shapes on the other because they'll cook at different speeds. So here we go, we'll roll this gently, and it needs to be about three millimetres thick. And we can turn it while it's not too big, but we'll get to the point where we can't turn it round because it's liable to just break. So keep it flowered so it doesn't stick. And there are rules about not rolling sideways, but when it gets quite big, you've got to because you simply can't turn it without breaking it. So I'm going to roll it sideways. The reason you don't normally do this is because the pressure is uneven and you don't finish up with a level piece of dough. It's usually thinner nearer to you and you don't roll as hard um, on the piece that's further away. So you get an uneven, uneven piece of dough. Right, so three millimetres. I think we're about there. It's a good idea to dip your cutter into flour so that it doesn't stick. And this new one that I've got is a cup of tea, which I think is quite nice. We'll see how it works. Right, so. Complicated shapes often are more difficult than the straightforward ones because you have all these little whirly bits that stick out. So have a palette knife handy and then you can go underneath and just lift it up to put it on the baking tray. And the scraps get rolled up when you've completely got as many out as you can from this first rolling. And you just keep going. They're not going to spread. So they can be quite close together. And just use a palette knife if you've got one. If you haven't got one, just use a regular table knife. And if you get them on fairly neatly, you'll be able to fit more on there. And we, we brush them with egg white when we've got them all cut out. So just keep going. I think that's probably going to be the last one. And that is 30 biscuits. I'll just squeeze this onto the tray. There we are. I probably could get one or two more out of that, but I'm running out of space on my baking trays. Now, when we're quite finished, what we've got to do next is brush them after we've just given them a little bit of a prod with a fork. And that stops them from rising. Hold on to it though, because they will lift off the tray. waste the egg white when you've separated an egg. Now, if you don't line your baking trays, there's a risk that the egg white will stick the biscuits to the tin. So that's why it's important to line for these and try and cover them evenly because you'll be able to tell if you've missed a bit. All right, so those are glazed and ready to go in. And they cook a gas mark six, 200 Celsius, 400 Fahrenheit for between 10 and 15 minutes, depending on how big they are. And I think these are going to take about 12 minutes. So I'll go and put them in now. There we are. Set the timer. And we're away. Right, the timer's gone off. And the first lot are out. Looking rather good. The second shelf, the second tray rather, isn't quite done, so that's going to go onto the top for maybe two minutes. I'll set the timer again and just give those, I'm going to give them three. So these are going to stay here to cool down now before I put them into a container or have one with a cup of tea. 
Right, this timer for the second tray has gone, so I'm going to move those across and get these out. There we are. There's our second tray. I'm quite pleased that the little line to show the top of the cup and the handle has stayed in there quite nicely, and the fork prongs look like a bit of a pattern that you might get on a cup. So I'm going to let those cool down and then I'll put them on a wire rack before I have a cup of tea. So there we are, citrus biscuits, perfect to have with a cup of tea in the afternoon. Have a go, like, share, subscribe and send us a photo. Bye for now.